Well, hello everybody. How are you? We are live. This is our Get Healthy U TV Q&A monthly session. My name is Chris Freitag, founder of Get Healthy U TV. I have the lovely Sam Cameronese hello. with me. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I love um, these Q&As. They're always so much fun. We take questions from all of you members, and if you're not a member and you just happen upon us on Facebook or on Instagram, hi there. Hi. Um, we take your question. Today's subject was going to be all about holiday weight gain and just kind of how to yeah. deal with your holiday schedule and how to deal with the highs and lows of the holidays and the stress and the good parts and 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 you know obviously stay healthy but we will take any questions so I just wanted to preface that that you can bring us on any questions about fitness fashion food whatever you want to talk about <laughs> friends we're here for you um, so we do have some pre-asked questions. Pre questions and we have some big announcements coming today. I, so. I know we have some really fun things to tell you today so stay with us about halfway through we're going to talk about some of that. For those of you who are new and I'm looking at um, Get Healthy UTV. Hi everybody uh, checking out Facebook and then of course our Get Healthy UTV page on the website. Yeah. Um, Get Healthy UTV is a streaming service. We stream workouts. We have over 250 workouts. We add a new one every Monday for our gold members. Okay. We add new programs every quarter that are for our premium and gold members. Um, I've been making fitness videos um, since I was a baby <laughs> for like 25 years. <laughs> um, and so we are both very passionate about workouts um, that are like in a group kind of a setting where someone's yeah. telling you what to do so you're actually getting more done than if you just stood there and stared at the wall by yourself. So for those of you who aren't members, we'll give you more information about that as you move along. If you are a member, this month we are following the new Bar Sculpt and Strong yeah. Yeah. calendar. Um, as a Facebook group, any of you who are in the private Facebook group, we follow a calendar together every month of the year. And it's we've been doing this now for almost four years. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun. I think it gives people a purpose they print out the calendar. They see what workout comes the next day. Every month we do different calendars. So like, la what was last month? I can't even remember. Uh, la oh, was it? Uh, Why am I blanking? Oh my gosh, we're totally blank. <laughs> we do blanking. so many of them. It wasn't fit track. over 40. Nope, it was lift. Was, it was yeah, lift. Yeah, yeah. It was low impact uh, functional training. So that's a whole style of workouts. We always throw in some, um, whoops, my phone is ringing. Go figure. Um, we always throw in some yoga, some Pilates, but this month we're following the Bar Sculpt and Strong. Now, just to preface that, um, Lindsay is the leader on most of these. If yes. you guys know trainer Lindsay, she's amazing. Um, she loves Bar. You can see a little bit of this, uh, the most, the latest or newest of the Bar program. Lindsay's leading. She's, by the way, you can't even tell. She's like six months, seven months pregnant in that picture. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was kicking my butt. Like, my legs were shaking <laughs> like leaves. I kept thinking, please don't have the camera focusing on me. I was so sore the next day. But in this calendar, there are a whole, there's a whole variety of different bar workouts. Yep. Bar is hard. It's those small, minute, like, muscle groups that you're recruiting that you don't normally do every day. And you're real. I mean, you really start to shake, and the afterburn, I feel like, is, is intense. Now, for those of you on Instagram, you're not seeing what the others are seeing on Facebook. We're previewing some of the um, bar workouts. And, man, they are tough. It's that little bit, like you said, of pulsing. Yeah. Um, the plies, the squats, the ab work, the arm work. It's just pretty amazing. So, if you are new to Get Healthy UTV, check out that calendar bar sculpt and strong. If you are not new, but you didn't know we followed a calendar together, join our Facebook group because yeah. we do that. Okay, let's get into the questions because that's what you're all here for. Let's do it. All right, um, so kind of starting with some of our more holiday topic ones. Yep. Um, can we talk about cravings and um, <laughs> how, you know, you kind of have all those cravings over the holidays. She explained how she feels like she's a bottomless pit sometimes after having a long day. So can we talk about curbing those cravings? Yeah, well, so first of all, sugar is very addictive. I mean, sugar has been compared to cocaine. I mean, I've, yeah. if you've ever watched the documentary Fed Up with Katie Couric, it's a pretty eye-opening documentary about the way sh your body reacts on sugar and you crave more. So at the holidays, one of the problems is there's a lot of sugar and alcohol around. And of course, you know, depending on what kind of alcohol you're drinking, it, it can turn into sugar. So we have to be really careful. What a couple of the things that I talk, uh, you know, to groups about at this time of year is first of all, don't bring a lot of sugar into your house. I mean, you're going to go to parties. You're going to go places where there's going to be indulging treats mm -hmm. and desserts and gooey, ooey dips and that kind of stuff. Try not to bring it into your 
your house unless you're entertaining for some reason. But, you know, you don't want to have to always go for those items during the holidays. Second of all, I do this. I know, and of course, I'm a health nut, so, <laughs> you know, you decide if this is for you. But I always make a couple of desserts that are things that I that want to eat, eat, that are low sugar, that maybe have sugar substitute, like a, a stevia in them, that maybe are made with, you know, oatmeal or no flour and butter, but something else. And honestly, when my kids were little, they would be like, oh my gosh, mom, no way. They wanted their, you know, sugary desserts. But as my kids have gotten older, they appreciate some of those healthier Healthy. tasting cookies. Yeah. It, it's kind of a, a joke with like my friends are always like, oh gosh, she's going to bring something with a health <laughs> <laughs> edge to it. But people do appreciate it. Even when I do that, people appreciate it and they go, hey, I love that dip you brought. What's in that? Or I love that those cookies you made or those cupcakes. So try to bake or cook with a little bit of a healthful edge, have a few things. And then the other thing I'm going to say about cravings is get yourself a bunch of cut up veggies, get some hummus, get some almond butter, get some so that when you have that need to munch, that you aren't going into all those crunchy, ooey gooey, you know, stuff that you like munch on like carrots and almond butter or, yep. you know, celery and, uh, and hummus. It's so much better for you. That's what we do. Um, Christmas is one that my aunt always does and love my aunt, but my whole family, we bring the fruits and the veggies because otherwise they're not there. They're and not so good, yeah. you, it, it is helpful to bring something that you know that you're going to eat because otherwise you might even be starving because you're not going to eat the rest of it. Well, and drink a lot of water. Yes. You know, especially on days where you know you're going to parties or you know you're going to events, water will help to satiate you a little bit and keep you from craving all the salt and sugar. Yep. It's a, it's a never ending cycle. Salt, sugar, salt, sugar. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, how do you address it when family gives you crap because you don't want to indulge in that? It well, happens. <laughs> at age 54, I've developed thick skin, and I don't care. I mean, when people say to me, oh, my gosh, wah, wah, here she comes. She's not going to overindulge or whatever. I'm like, that's fine. I, I don't have to. And as a matter of fact, when I was younger, when I was your age, <laughs> overindulging didn't affect me the way it does now. Now it affects my sleep. It affects the way I feel the next day. It affects my mood. It affects my brain power. Everything, and, you know, and I think in some of you who maybe are in your 50s or older probably could relate to the fact that you feel different now. And so I just, I, you know, when someone makes fun of me, I'm like, that's okay. You know, it's kind of like online. When someone decides to make fun of me, I'm like, that's okay. You can have your opinion. I'm not going to let it bother me internally because I'm going to be who I am and I'm proud of it. So I think you have to do that too. That doesn't mean I don't indulge. I mean, believe me, I am like a sweets lover, but I'm very methodical about knowing, okay, I'm going to indulge, but I'm going to be, you know, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to have a cookie. I'm going to have a piece of cheesecake, whatever it might be. I'm going to have a glass of wine or a couple glasses of wine, but not go, you know, hog wild. Right. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, what do you do when you, um, have had enough for the day drinking and eating, but friends are still kind of going at it and then they're, they're wanting you to drink or do more. Well, one of the things that I've noticed is they will say to you, oh, have a drink or do this or do that. But when you say no, they honestly don't care. They just move on. Most people are just concerned with themselves. Um, and I find like when I'm even out at night, um, and a lot of times, like, let's say we're out with family, we're out, out with our adult kids. And there's a lot of, you know, people in their twenties who can just keep going and going, you know, I just, drink water. I just do my thing. I'm not, I'm, I, I still can have a ton of fun, but I'm not overindulging, um, whether it's eating or drinking and mm -hmm. kind of do my own thing. And honestly, when someone says to you, Hey, you want another drink? You say, no, I've had enough. I'm having a glass of water. You know what they say? They usually go, Oh, yeah. Okay. And they move on. They're yeah. doing their thing. So again, it goes back to thick skin, have some thick skin people. Um, how do you resist temptations in the break room at work when there's holiday treats almost every day? I've been <laughs> <Okay>. there. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Um, and by the way, if you're just joining us on Facebook or Instagram, we are talking how to avoid the holiday weight gain and temptations um, that are going to happen in the next six weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty typical at work that there's tons of snacks and treats and people bring in, you know, home-baked goods and you have, like, uh, potluck luncheons where there's all these ooey-gooey things. One of the things that I've always said about anything that's kind of that a grazing type of atmosphere is get a plate out, whether it's in the break room of the office or at a party, put the things on it that you want to eat all at once. So you look at what you've got and then slowly but surely eat that at your desk or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. The problem is keep going back for more. Yep. When people go for one bite, then they walk through the break room, do it again, do it again. You don't realize how much you've eaten. But when you actually put it on a plate, you're like, okay, I'm satisfied with this amount. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of this 
it, it comes down to your ability to talk to yourself. Yeah. Positive self-talk. Like, hey, I want to eat these things. I'm going to try these few things, but I'm also going to be moderation because I know how bad I feel when I don't stay in moderation or how I don't sleep well or whatever it might be. Um, so it's it's not about not allowing yourself. It's about being smart. Yeah. And when I used to work in the corporate that, I mean, I went through that the month of December, they do all, almost every day. And I guess one thing that helped me is that knowing we had a calendar of like what was happening that day. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to indulge in that day. But you know what? I'm going to do this day because I really like tacos or yep. whatever. So pick you can kind of pick and choose. Um, yes, and you know what? I was kind of that person um, that I would bring in the healthy treats. And I got so much crap for it, but I was like known as the healthy nut in the office. And I was like, you know what? I kind of have this like. So I just went on this girls weekend a couple weekends ago, kind of to, to your point, And everyone was bringing something. I said, I'm bringing a dessert dip. And immediately in the text group, everyone's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, what is a dessert dip from Chris? Yep. And they're like, what is it? Is it hummus? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell you. So the reality is it's that uh, cookie dough dip that we put up on Instagram, I don't know. About a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. Yep. And it is made with chickpeas, but it's like, it tastes like cookie, cookie dough. dough. It has some protein powder in it and some vanilla and um, some other uh, almond butter and stuff. And yeah. everybody loved it. They were making fun of me at first, but then they all ate it and then everybody wanted the recipe. They all so, want the recipe, yeah. Thick skin, people. Hashtag thick skin. <laughs> Um, okay, you are going to love this question. Um, fitting in walking when there's snow and ice on the ground, what do you do? Oh my gosh, okay. I hate winter. <laughs> I, I just do. I don't usually use that word. I'm usually really positive, but yeah. I just really despise cold weather. I just hate being freezing cold. Um, and so I get it. It's hard. But what I do is I create a group. I have a walking group. We egg each other on. We motivate each other. So typically in the winter, we're gonna we're gonna walk on weekends. That's what we do. Hey, any of you girlfriends, if you're online, shout out to you. <laughs> um, and we make a time that we're gonna meet, and we put on our Sorel boots and our Polar Tech tights and our long parkas and our hats and our really warm gloves with hand warmers in there. And guess what? Our dogs love it. Okay. And we go out in that cold, and we just keep going. And honestly, we get hot. But it's the motivation of meeting a group that yeah. really gets me there. Um, I also just commented on this um, as of this week. Normally, in the warmer months, I work out in the morning and I walk my dog in the evening. Mm -hmm. But now <laughs> when, the, when the weather changes, I now need to also walk the dog in the morning because by the time I'm done working for the day and it's after 5 p.m. and it's pitch black, I have <laughs> zero motivation to go outside. So I just started flipping my schedule where I'm making a little extra time in the morning and then maybe work a little longer in the evening. But yeah. you know what? You just got to do it. I mean, Nike has made hundreds of millions, probably billions of dollars on that saying, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have um, Anya wondering what the big announcement is. Of course she is wondering. <laughs> she can't wait for anything. It's coming. We're going to talk about it halfway through the hour. What time? We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Because um, we do have something super exciting to talk about. Um, yes, we do. So, um, let's see. Do you bake cookies? Um, this is a tradition for her and her family, but would love to know your thoughts on, like, do you actually bake them? What do you, are there healthy recipes out there? Yep, I bake cookies. <laughs> <laughs> my family, it's also been a tradition in my family. My mom used to literally kill herself making like 20 different types. I thought that was too many, but that was a really big tradition in our family. And then we'd have the cookie plate and everyone would love it over the holidays. So what I do is I make a couple that are tradition and have like a feeling in my family. Cut out cookies have always been something that my kids always decorated when they were little. I decorated when I was little. So I always do cutouts, the true sugar cookie, sugar, butter, make the batter, the yummy frosting, everything. Um, and then I often will make gingerbread because I love gingerbread, <laughs> but I'll make a few. And then I always make, like I mentioned earlier, one or two healthy alternatives that I like to eat that are something that I'm going to indulge in in the evenings. Um, and it, my kids have become more interested in some of the healthier treats. My yeah. husband has definitely, over 30 years, become more interested. Um, and for instance, our daughter is now vegetarian. She was vegan. So we did a lot of um, vegan baking for a while, yeah. which delicious. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do. It's about the only time of the year that I'm truly a, a baker. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not usually a, a, like a baker. Um, let's see, deciding 
what to eat or not to eat and fitting in workouts during the holiday season. Do you find that it's more difficult during the holiday season to fit those in? I, you know, I, we talk about this every year, every year, because it is harder to fit them in because you are busier over the holidays. I don't know about you, and you'll have to uh, jump in too, but I have more evening events, mm -hmm. you know, in the months of November and December, more than I actually want to go to. It's like a holiday <laughs> happy hour and a this and a that and a, you know, there's just always something going on. I, last week, I had three of the five weekday nights I had something going on. This week, two of the five uh, no, it's going to be three of the five for me this week. And that's it, a lot for you yeah. on a weekday. <laughs> it gets hard, and then you're more tired, so it's harder to get up and do the workout. So here's what I would say. First of all, if you are super deprived on sleep, choose sleep. Because when you mm -hmm. are so tired and you try to go work out, often you don't even put forth the effort. Have you ever been just going through the motions where you think, I would be better off in bed right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was me about two weeks ago. About two weeks ago, <laughs> yeah. So if you feel that way, then catch up on your sleep. That's important. But if you can fit in short workouts, you know, if you can go, like, for instance, on Get Healthy UTV, we have so many 10-minute workouts and 20-minute workouts. And for anybody who says, well, does 10 minutes work? I want you to try one of our 10-minute workouts. We have about 50 of them. Yes. Yep. Uh, you sweat. You get your heart pumping. You burn 100 calories. I mean, it, it's for real. So maybe if... You go from, instead of doing your hour-long workout in the yeah. morning, but you go to your half-hour workout or your 20-minute workout, you're still getting that body moving. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you are a six-day-a-week kind of a person, you go down to three days a week during the holiday. Just don't go cold turkey, nothing. Yeah. I can't believe the number of people I talk to that go, oh, my gosh, I didn't do one thing over the holidays because it's so hard to get back into it. Yep. Keep your toe in the water a little bit for your mental health and yes. your physical health. I was going to say, for that mental you know, there's just so much going on. It is a great mental relief, even if it's 20 minutes. Like, yeah. hop on, you know, put a, you know, a DVD in or whatever. Your get healthy UTV. Get healthy UTV. Um, or walking outside again if it's warm enough out, or just bundle yourself up. But like the mental aspect of that just feels so much better. You can then go back to whatever you're doing afterwards. And that's why I've always been a morning exerciser for the last like 20 plus years, because especially at the holidays, the evenings. You might go, oh, I have nothing going on tonight. And by 3 p.m., guess what? It's dark out. All of a sudden, or someone says, hey, meet me for a drink. Or someone says, oh, there's this party, or let's go holiday shopping, or whatever. So if you get it done in the morning, then you can be a little bit you know, more relaxed about, about the evening. Um, we have a question from Carol, and I really like this question. The holidays are always stressful, fun, but stressful. Do you have any stress relief recommendations during the busy time? Well, it is stressful. Like, I agree. Fun and stressful. That's mm -hmm. probably the two words I would use to describe the holiday season. <laughs> um, this year, more than ever, I'm trying to be more prepared. Okay. Like, pre-think gifts. I, I mean, I tend to be one of those people that on December 20th, I kind of start freaking out. <laughs> so I'm trying to pre-think gifts. We are actually doing way less gifts in my family now. Yep. Um, nobody feels the pressure to give everybody in the family a gift. Sometimes we just do gifts of something comes to mind that's super yep. exciting and we do it. So kind of keep that low pressure. Um, you know, I try to do a little more yoga, a little mm -hmm. bit more deep breathing, um, a little more sleep. I mean, honestly, sleep is such, it like it repairs your mind, your body. And I think when we are super sleep deprived, it's easy to let stress invade your, um, invade your world. Um, I try to to have a little bit more alone time, you know, just mm -hmm. take some time where it's like, okay, I'm going to today, you know, like for instance, I'm going to wash my hair today. I'm not going to let anyone get in my way. It feels good. Or I'm going to take a bath or I'm going to go to a yoga class or something like that. Um, so, you know, those are some suggestions. I mean, stress is just inevitable during the holidays based on schedules, but I yeah. think a little pre-planning and um, a little me time. And then what was the a second part of the question? Um, fitting in the workouts. Oh yeah, fitting in the workouts. We like we just talked about. Go go with a shorter workout. Just don't skip it. Go with a shorter workout or cut one day out a week or whatever it might be. If your holiday, you know, is hard on you. And you know, every Christmas we've traveled. Now this year I'm I am hosting, but in my family we move it around. Yeah. And every Christmas holiday I do get healthy UTV. 
I, this little computer right here, I bring it in my hotel room. Last year we were in Chicago and my youngest sister, I would call her in her room and say, get your butt up here. We're going to do a workout. And she's like, ah, you know, complaining. I'm like, get up here. And then we did body weight workouts yep. in my room. Um, I remember because Lindsay was, you know, barking at us, telling us what to do. <laughs> my sister's like, this is so hard. I, but you get it done and then you have a much better day. And bring your family members into it. I did the same thing last year because I think Christmas is the one day that like everything is closed you can't really go to lifetime or anything and I had Chris barking in my mom in my ear and it just felt good we went downstairs we escaped the dog we escaped my my dad everything we went downstairs we did it <laughs> together it. and then we were able to just kind of go on with our day so it is a great stress reliever um and you get your day started I love it um, all right, so stay tuned. We still have those uh, the fun announcement. We have a fun soon. announcement, and I am looking on Instagram. I haven't seen a question. I've seen a lot of people joining, but if anyone has a question, even on Instagram, Let all of you know. ask away because we're taking questions off of Facebook and our Get Healthy You TV page. Um, so we have a someone who just joined Get Healthy You TV. Um, she just got the program, but is a little over overwhelmed. Um, where does she, where do you start? Okay, so we created a, a, a video. It's under tech tips so if you go to the get healthy you TV website and go to tech tips we try to create a video for common questions so uh oh my Instagram says it's reconnecting there we go <laughs> um, so if some you know if members ask the same question over and over we make a video we created a video called how to navigate the get healthy you TV site because people would say I don't understand premium versus gold I don't understand how to sort the workouts I don't understand how to connect my TV or my to my laptop or my how to use my iPad or whatever it might be I don't understand how do I make it look like an app on my phone all of those questions We've got little videos for you. Mm -hmm. Start with the how to navigate Get Healthy UTV. That video, I put that one together. It's a couple minutes, minutes but it one, really, yeah. really gives you an overview. And then look at a couple of the others and then join the Facebook group because yeah. I'm telling you right now, all of you Facebookers out there, GHU TV squad, you women are truly amazing. Yes. And I go in the, uh, I typically go in at night yep. to the group. And when I go in and look, there are questions for me and people have already answered them for me. Yeah. I love it. They'll be like, hey, Chris, where do I find blah, blah, blah? And someone else has already answered. Oh, right here. And I'm like, I love you guys. I love you, man. <laughs> um, I think another thing, if you're you know, wondering where to start with workouts, like the Facebook group, ask people where to start. Because um, they'll have great, you know, they've done them all or have done a few of them. So if you join the face group, Facebook group, they'll be great resources. We also do mark every workout that is beginner, yes. beginner. So it has a little like orange tab that says beginner. So you know, oh, this would be good for me. Or any calendars that are geared towards beginners, we wrote beginner on it so yep. that, you know, you can kind of go, all right, this is better for me. Because we really do have all levels of fitness um, mm -hmm. in our membership. We do. That's what makes it good. Um, back to a few of the holiday questions. Do you have any fun ideas for great holiday gifts for fit friends? Fit friends. <laughs> Well, um, if it's just for a friend, a lot of times I do, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of so many things. Do you have any ideas too? I mean, it depends on what your budget is. Yeah. Even fit friends, I, I tend to do like, I do candles a lot. Yeah. I love candles or essential oils um, because a lot of people who exercise do love essential oils. Water bottles. Um, water bottles, yeah, <laughs> a cute water bottle. Yeah. These Yetis. Yeah are the best um, and make a great uh, water bottle or a coffee. Most people who work out also drink coffee. <laughs> they so do. a cute coffee mug, um, a gift card to, or something from like your favorite fitness store or Dick's Sporting Goods. Yep, you or know. your favorite like restaurant that, you know, like Crispin Green. I know a lot of my friends, for you Minnesota people, um, Crispin Green is a great one. Yep, yes, um, absolutely. Restaurants that you enjoy going to maybe with them that are a little bit healthier. I don't know, that's right. also an option. Right, I love it. Um, we have somebody asking, are you doing the 12 days of Christmas again? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. You know, <laughs> I am talking to Spry about it right now. Those, this would be our fifth annual. 12 days of fitness. It's been so fun over the years where every day I demonstrate a different product um, and then we give a discount on that product. So stay tuned because they've had a lot of changes at Spry. I'm just kind of waiting to hear back from them, but I do think we're going to do it. Perfect. 
Um, we have Deb commenting, great socks for workout make great gifts, too. Didn't think about oh, that. Oh, Deb, good idea. Great, because <laughs> socks make such a freaking difference. They do. Um, you know, whether you have a performance sock on or just a cheap cotton sock, that makes... That makes a big difference. That was a great idea. It, See, you people are so creative. I love it. They answer our questions for us. I know. Um, okay. Here is a non-holiday question, but a good one. Um, is it okay to foam roll before you get sore, or should you wait until you're really sore? Foam rolling is just like therapy. Okay, so think of it as a daily thing to do, whether you're sore or not. Um, I kind of look at foam rolling as just a way to stay healthy. I know that I'm abusing my muscles to some extent <laughs> um, on a daily basis. So foam rolling just gets out the knots, improves the circulation, gets rid of, you know, take, you got fascia under your skin. It's like webbing. And when it gets super tight, that's when you start to get aches and pains and stiffness and soreness. And so you just kind of want to break that fascia up a little mm -hmm. bit. So it, it doesn't matter when you, you foam roll. You don't have to do it directly after a workout. Mm -hmm. I do it in the morning. That's what I do before I even work out. I just roll out and kind of get rid of my knots. But yeah, I would say look at it more as therapy, mm -hmm. like you would look at a massage. You go get a massage whenever you have time to do it, right? Right. That's how I would look at it. And it's very worthy and very smart to do. Yes. Keep up on that because when you get real tight, it's almost harder. Yeah. Um, okay. How We kind of covered this, but how do you stay off the couch when it gets dark and cold at 5 o'clock every single day? I don't. <laughs> I get right on that couch. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Do you? <laughs> um, so that's why I, like I said, just kind of, I do prefer to work out in the morning and then like do something a little more active in the evening, like walk the dog in the evening. But when it gets cold, it just gets cold and it's dark and I'm not going to do that. So I flip the switch a little bit and I'm doing a little bit extra activity in the morning. And then at night I am doing less. And you do, I think it's your body's like circadian rhythm too, where it's dark. You're already in your pajamas by, I mean, I was joking the other day on Instagram, all of you Instagrammers, I put a little post up that said, you know, daylight savings for me, it's the first day of the year where I say I'm not going outside after, after 6 p.m. Yeah. till April. Um, so, you know, but maybe there's, you know, things that you can do in your house at night, or maybe there's activities that, uh, as the holidays approach, I find myself cleaning and doing yeah. laundry and doing things that need to get done to get ready for the holidays uh, because I'm entertaining and I have so many people coming. But it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a true issue. It, like, do you really find is. yourself spending more time like sitting around at night? I actually, so funny thing, my schedule is super busy in the winter. So I oh, well, actually. She coaches dance. She coaches high school dance. Yeah. Like that's a whole different. Most days I don't get home until nine, but like I prefer having it that way just cause I would, I would go home and sit on the couch. And so it keeps me busy, but I'm less busy in the summer and I find myself like feeling the opposite during the summer. That's so. funny because it is totally opposite for me. And being an empty nester now, I mean, when my kids were little, I never sat on the couch because right. it was like by the time you got them home from school and did dinner and then finished your work and then went and drove them to every sport, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and now I do honestly find myself spending more couch time. But I also find myself making time for more podcasts, more books, yeah. catching up on yeah. series and things that I want to watch. And if I know that I've been active in the morning, I don't feel quite as guilty about it. Absolutely. Um, going back to, we just have a suggestion. Um, would you ever make a video about foam rolling? Oh yeah. Well, we, let's see, did we do, okay. We have an article on gethealthyyou.com about foam rolling as well as a download. Um, we did a, uh, one of our actual members or one of our squad members asked for a download that she could print out and look at the different exercises. So yeah. we did make that, but, um, yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like we did. A a I feel like we did uh, some sort of a video. I have to look back. It was a couple years ago. So we could definitely put that on our um, rotation to add a new one. I did do a video on low back yep. pain and how to roll out your low back because you don't want to take a foam roller straight up and down your back. Your foam roller is for your hips and your legs and your shoulders, but you don't want to go down the center of your spine. And I showed in that video how to use a uh, massage ball. Yep. Um, and I use that daily. It is literally what keeps me upright. I share it with so many people that I finally just made a video of it so mm -hmm. I could, you know, email my people. friends and all of you um, that video. So do check that out. That's on Get Healthy You TV for low back stretching. But um, Sam will add that to our 10 minute videos. We will. Foam rolling. Um, what are your thoughts on wearing a weighted vest while walking? Uh, she actually used it during a kickboxing class yesterday, and she said her body is aching. But what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I don't know if I would use it during kickboxing <laughs> because jumping up and down, that just might be hard on the joints. You're, you're weighting the joints. That's why I always tell people, like, when they lose weight, they have this joyous, like, feeling because think of all that weight, t bar, you know, bearing down on your joints all the time. It really helps when you lose weight. So that being said, I don't know about the way to invest while jumping up and down, but while walking, it's great. Um, it just gives you more resistance mm -hmm. against gravity. Um, for me, I just won't wear it in the summer because I just feel like I look funny and call me, <laughs> I'm not being vain, but I just don't like the way it looks. So I don't really, and plus you get too hot. I mean, yeah. it's so hot, but in the winter, you got your winter coat on. I mean, it could be good. So I would try it. Yeah, I would definitely try it. Um, do you have any uh, motivational podcast recommendations to help get moving when the weather is less than ideal? Um, walking, if you're walking alone, any good podcasts that you recommend? I'm a podcast lover. <laughs> so, but I listen to a lot of like entrepreneurial podcasts. So okay. I love the Guy Raz, How I Built This. But you don't have to be an entrepreneur to listen to that. No, not at all. That is an amazing podcast. He literally interviews all these people who have started crazy companies like Zappos and Tom's Shoes and, um, um, Angie's Boom Chicka Pop and oh, yeah. Stacy's Pita Chips and like just it's so interesting to hear how these people developed whatever it was from you know from nothing and so it's pretty cool I love that I love um, if you, I, well you don't even have to be local I like By All Means which is yep, by one of our one. local gals she is the editor in chief of Twin Cities Business Magazine mm -hmm. and she interviews Twin Cities entrepreneurs and business owners and again I just love listening to people's minds and how they mm -hmm. came up with it I listen to Rachel Hollis's um, yeah. Let's Rise podcast. I do like that. She had Tim McGraw on two days ago. Oh, I'm going to have to listen to that I one. love Tim McGraw. <laughs> and they were talking about his fitness routine, so I Ooh. love that. Yeah. I love Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Um, I listen to that. And I love Dr. Hyman. Um, he is a naturopath. Well, I shouldn't say not naturopath. He is a true doctor, mm -hmm. but he does a lot of functional medicine. He has two podcasts. One's called House Calls. One's called Doctor's Pharmacy. I even have my husband listening to that one now, and I really, really love it. And that's just like there's there's, there's so too many, many podcasts yeah. now. I, I don't even know how to pick. There's probably about ten more that I have on my watch list that I want to. Yeah, it's add. definitely like what you're interested in. I have a few friends that love um, like murder mystery ones, which I have not. I'm not tapped a fiction into. person. Yeah, me either. I'm more of the health, fitness, all that. You know entrepreneur ones too but well and the best thing that I the best gift I got last Christmas was airpods oh the best my husband gave them to me and it has changed my world because when I had my you know pa, my earphones connected to my phone and then the leash for the dog like everything <laughs> would get all toiled time. especially when you're in a winter coat and a hat and a scarf and a, so those little airpods game changer oh, amazing <laughs> they <laughs> that's are. a great Christmas God, gift. A good Christmas gift um, we have Tina. She is two months postpartum. Do you have any tips on how to get back on track? She finds that it is hard um, to make time, and she's also very, very tired. Oh, and I don't know <laughs> if this is your first baby, Tina, or your third baby, or whatever it might be, and congratulations. Yes. It is a hard time. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I, I can't believe some of the new mamas that I know how <laughs> how hard they work. They're working. They're working out. They're doing all these things. I, I, when my um, kids were little, I had three kids working full time. My workouts did suffer. They did. I mean, I'll be really honest. There was a point where I felt like working out once a week was a like gift of glory for me at that point. And when I switched my full time job to be um, in fitness, then you know things started aligning and I was able to work out more. But um, I think you have to just find little pockets of time. That's why we love Get Healthy U TV because a lot of new moms will say 10 minutes is all I've got. And you gotta feel good about those 10 minutes because 10 minutes is better than nothing. And if you're doing 10 minutes, five days a week, that's better than doing one workout once a month. You're going right. to end up with better overall health. So give yourself a little grace. Do something at home that's easy to do. I always tell people, if you say, oh, you know, I have a brand new baby at home, but I'm going to sign up for this CrossFit class that's a 20-minute drive, yeah. you're never going to go. Yep. You're never going to go because, you know, your schedule is going to get foiled. But if you say, hey, I've got a pocket of time and I'm going to open my computer and do a 10-minute workout, boom. I even noticed um, Coach Lindsay, she the other day, she started a workout and she goes, I only got 10 minutes in and then, yeah. you know, her baby was crying and ready for food and then she's like, maybe I'll get back to it later, but she's like, I got 10 minutes in, you know, yeah. and it really, I mean, I don't have kids, so I don't know what it's like, but it makes you kind of shift your mindset of like, yeah, 10 minutes is... 10 minutes is worthy. Absolutely. It is worthy. 
Absolutely. Hey, should we talk about our... I was going to say, it's 1.30. Okay. <laughs> so for those of you who have stayed with us, let's talk about our exciting news, and then we'll continue to answer questions. Yep. So again, I always go back to the philosophy of, if you ask, we will listen. And for years, Sam can attest to this, people have been saying, why don't we have a live get-together? Why don't we do something where we can all meet each other? Why don't you do a live uh, weekend or something? So guess what? We're doing it. Yay. <laughs> we are doing it. We are having the first ever Get Healthy You TV Fitness Weekend coming up in April of 2020 here in Minneapolis where we are based. Believe me, we would never ask you to come to Minneapolis in January because no. we know you wouldn't come. <laughs> but it is actually pretty in April. I know it's hard to believe. Um, it's a full weekend. Now, yep. I've been teaching at fitness conferences for well over a decade, and it's been something that has been so important to me because when I go to fitness conferences, I just come back rejuvenated. I have a new, renewed interest in myself and my fitness level, and I meet new friends, and I come up with new ideas, and I've tried new things, and I've pushed myself, and I come home just like ready to go. It's like any kind of a retreat that you sign up for or yeah. a self-development retreat or a yoga retreat. Or I just ran into someone today who said they were leaving on a 10-day yoga retreat. Ooh. That's a long one. Um, but this is our fitness weekend. You can see it up on the screen. If you are on our Get Healthy You TV page, it is right at the bottom, bottom of the screen. Yep. Just scroll down and you'll see the little ad uh, to get your ticket now to sign up. Um, if you are on Facebook or Instagram, we're going to put links in the comments. Yep. And if you are on our email list, we will be sending you an email. So we sent out an email last week. Now it's only October. It is. And we got a lot of signups. And we were really excited, excited. about it. Yeah. So many of you Get Healthy You TV squad members are like, I'm coming, I'm coming. People have already been talking about meeting each other. Some people have talked about their husbands are coming with them. Yeah, I love that. And, and then they're going to like go to the Twins game and they're going to um, do some sightseeing and stuff like that. Um, so if you are interested, it's going to be a full weekend of education, of fitness, of friend making, of memory making, of pushing yourself past limits that you might be you know, kind of holding back on, of helping you think about mindset differently and food differently. We're going to transcend all of that. We have the trainers coming. Yeah. Um, of the five trainers, four of them are coming. Awesome. So you can meet the other trainers that you um, have been working out with for the last few years. We are really excited. We are. So um, respond to the email. Space is limited. That is the one thing for our first, uh, our, our first fitness weekend. Um, we have limited space. Yep. So we were pretty shocked at how many people signed up just, just last in week. one week, and yep. it is only October. So don't miss out on the opportunity to join us. I would be so pumped to meet you. And I, like I just said, anytime I am at a fitness weekend, it is like this renewed, jazzed up feeling. It, and I look at it almost like, for me, all my girlfriends that we would meet at these conferences, yeah. other other trainers, we were all educators at these conferences. We'd literally, we're like kids. We'd be like, okay, I'll meet you. All right, let's share a hotel room. You know, it was just, we had so much fun. So I'm super excited for those of you who um, are interested. Yeah. Um, and we have people wondering if um, husbands can hum come. Bring husbands, yeah. bring your friends. They probably don't want to come to the fitness conference. I don't know if they'd love that. But they can come to Minneapolis. Uh, well, they could They could they join can, in yeah. on a workout or yeah. something if they want to sign up. But they probably don't want to. But, well, it depends if they want to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I just, had, I just read one comment where someone said, thank you for having it during a Twins home game. I'm like, I didn't even didn't know it was a know. Twins home game. But that sounds fun. Target Field is amazing. Yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. Sign um, up, sign up, sign up. Yes. So we have people asking what your favorite holiday treat is. Hmm. Okay. Well, I love sugar. Um, so <laughs> I just mentioned earlier gingerbread. I love gingerbread. I love pumpkin pie. I've always loved those cinnamon type spice desserts. I don't know why. I mean, since I've been a kid, my birthday is on Halloween, and I always had an apple crisp or a pumpkin pie for my birthday cake instead of birthday cake. So that's always been my thing. I love gingerbread so much. I love ice cream, like peppermint stick ice cream. My favorite dessert at Christmas is peppermint ice uh, stick ice cream with like a hunk of gingerbread or something like that. Um, I'm not like a a huge chocolate person. I do like chocolate, like, but I don't. I don't crave it. But I love fruity, tooty type desserts. <laughs> so that would be what I go for. Um, I love red wine, and especially at the holidays, I love that with like a good hors d'oeuvre. But those, my indulgences would probably be a good glass of red wine with maybe some dark chocolate, or 
ice cream and gingerbread. There you go. Um, of course, I'll probably think about 10 other things I love, too. <laughs> <laughs> Halo top, any of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we have um, somebody, Trisha, she commented yesterday on your Instagram poll. Okay. Um, she says, Chris, first off, thank you for all that you do. Um, um, could you talk about exercise and aging? She is 44 and she struggles with not being able to train like she could when she was 40. She goes, I'm feeling a lot older. I've tried different modalities, recently started running again, but finding out that it's hurting your joints. Um, any thoughts on aging and staying in shape? <laughs> You're asking the expert, So right? fun, isn't it? Uh, it is truly a mental game. It really is. Because, you know, I'm sitting there, you say 44, I'm like, oh, girlfriend, just wait till you're 54. Because <laughs> 44 was good. <laughs> um, but things do start to change. You, you need more recovery time. That's one of the things that happens with aging, is your body requires more recovery. Just like anything, when I was talking about indulging earlier, you know, when you'd have like a big night and eat a pizza at two in the morning, like you woke up the next day and you were pretty much okay. If I do that now, forget it. I'm down for the count, you know, for like a day. So you need more recovery time for your muscles and your joints. You might need to be kinder to your muscles and your joints. I don't know because everybody's different. Some people can stay running till they're 80. Um, mm -hmm. me, for me, running in my 40s is when I kind of had to stop. It was super depressing for me actually mentally because I identified as a runner. That was kind of like I always considered myself like runner at the top of the list. And um, but for some reason, my left side of my body, my knee, my hip, everything just really gets screwed up when I run consistently. So I stopped running and started walking. And a lot of people say, well, walking, that doesn't work. Yes, it does, mm -hmm. because I walk like every day, burn several hundred calories. Um, it keeps me energized. Mm -hmm. It um, strengthens your legs. Uh, you know, it's not going to necessarily strengthen your upper body, but it, it's a good form of movement. Um, maybe you do need some lower impact things. Maybe you just need to, like for me, high impact a couple days a week, but not every day of the week. Yep. Because as I've gotten older, I need that little bit more recovery time. I have some friends who are in their 50s, they do no high impact. They've, I have friends who have had knee replacements or knee surgery or hip things going on. And they say, you know what? No, I'm, I'm just going to, anything that you're teaching us, Chris, in our class, I'm just going to modify it and do it lower impact. Yep. The one thing I would say is if you're competitive, it's hard. Because, for instance, when I'm standing next to this lovely girl, <laughs> well, she's almost 30 years younger than me, right? So when I watch her jump up and down, I'm like, oh, I just want to do that. I just want to hold those weights and do that. And, you know, it's not that I'm negative, but it hurts my body. It's just not, yeah. I'm not as capable of doing that. I'm still capable of pushing myself. I still love a good challenge. I still want to work out hard for my body and, and, you know, meet my goals, but I just have to change things a little bit. And that's what happens with aging. I think the, the, what I've seen happen with a lot of athletes is because they can't do what they were doing before, Originally, they yeah. just quit. Yeah. So they go, Oh man, I was an athlete. I was in such good shape. Now I'm 50 pounds mm -hmm. overweight. Well, don't let that be mm -hmm. your, you know, don't let that be the excuse that you say, Oh, well, I can't do it. So now I'm just going to be a blob, you know, just modify it. Aging is a hard process. <laughs> it is a hard process. You have to keep that positive attitude and say, listen, you know, you still have a lot of years left ahead of you. So don't just go for more years, go for good years mm -hmm. and take care of your body. Yeah. You just got to be smart about it. You, I've even had just a few minor, you know, injuries and I'm like, you know, it's not even worth pushing it to what you to, you know, used to be able to do. So. Well, and I always tell people like, if you're training for a marathon, then you have to run. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, if you're training, for a triathlon, you have to swim. <laughs> but if you're just training for life, like you want to stay fit, you want to look toned, you want to have a clear head, you want your heart and all your health numbers to be in check, then cross train, listen to your body, don't overdo it. There's no badge of honor because you jumped up and down 50 times. Right. Do what works for your body. Um, okay, uh, we have a member saying she thinks that you have awesome advice and you're super motivational. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have asked me that, like, oh, how about start a podcast? I'm like, oh, how about, you know, fall over dead? <laughs> um, I just have such a tight schedule right now. You do. And I, I would need to cut a few things out of my life in order to add that in. And maybe I will. I mean, maybe I will in the future. There's just so many podcasts out there right now that I feel like there's a lot to listen to already, but I'm never short on words. So <laughs> who knows? Thank you for uh, the recommendation. 
Um, we have somebody asking, are apples high in carbs? Oh my gosh, I love this question. <laughs> you do. Apples are natural carbs, so who cares is my answer. Nobody is 20 pounds overweight because they overindulged in apples. I have never in the history of my career had anyone say to me, man, I wish I wouldn't have indulged in all those apples. I mean, I am <laughs> super fat because of apples, said no one ever. Um, so I do not worry about the carbs in fruit ever or vegetables. They are natural carbs. They are healthy. Fruit is so different than added sugar. Fruit, yes, it is fructose, but it is combined with fiber. And when it is combined with fiber, your body uses it differently than just that added sugar shot into your system. So plus, all fruit is combined with extra antioxidants and vitamins and minerals that your body needs. They help you feel satiated. So eat an apple with zero guilt ever. Nobody gains 10 pounds because they ate one apple a day. That just doesn't happen. I, so, I, and I mean, like, I eat a banana every day, and I still argue with my older sister who says, bananas make you fat. I'm like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, I can't even go there with her anymore because I'm like, every athlete eats a banana every day. Every day, yeah. Um, so don't worry about fruit. Don't worry about those carbs. Worry about the carbs coming from processed food, bags, boxes, cartons, crunchies, salties, you know, nacho platter that you ordered, loaded potato skins. Those are your problem. Um, we have somebody saying that she strength trains uh, three days a week. Okay. The scale goes up and down, but the clothes are getting smaller in size. How do you get the scale number to go down? Throw it out. Thank you. Throw out the scale. <laughs> Because if your clothes size is going down, who cares what you weigh? Yep. And as a female, your weight is going to fluctuate about five pounds a month based on your cycle. Mm -hmm. So you have this 28 day cycle and you go through the beginning and then the end and then the beginning and the end. And, and sometimes at certain parts of the cycle, it's easier to get inflamed mm -hmm. and weightlifting causes inflammation. And actually I know that when I am either over lifting, I'm super sore, I'm giving myself no recovery or I'm getting very little sleep, I weigh more. So do I, yep. And then when I get some good sleep or I just let my body recover a little bit, I weigh less because it's based on inflammation and water table. In your body so don't you know if you're just fluctuating a couple pounds but your your clothes size is going down I'd be like hip hip Super hooray exciting. you're obviously yeah. losing body fat gaining muscle yep. um, which makes a really big difference I always go by how my clothes fit always right? yep if my jeans don't zip there's a problem right but <laughs> I, if I've gained a pound on the scale I don't care yep 10 pounds 20 that's a problem <laughs> Um, is it bad to work out after a meal? She says she always works out in the afternoon, so she eats lunch, then waits about 30 minutes to work out. Does it have the same effect? If it doesn't bother you, that's fine. Most people do not like to have a full stomach when they're exercising because all the blood is rushing to the digestive system and either A, they're going to feel sluggish, B, they're going to be burping or, yeah. or feeling like acid reflux or whatever yeah. uh, or not be motivated enough to get their heart rate up high enough. So you have to listen to your body. But if that 30 minute window is good enough for you, I also don't know what you're eating for lunch. So if you're not eating a very big lunch, maybe 30 minutes is just fine. I find that like I can eat breakfast in the morning and then work out like an hour later and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But I tend to not eat a lot before a workout. Yeah, me neither. Um, going back to what you just were talking about with the, the cycle, um, is that cycle still relevant uh, during peri or menopause? Mm -hmm. You still have a cycle during peri perimenopause and menopause. Now, postmenopause, that's a whole different system or a whole different thing because once you're postmenopause, meaning no period for over a year, then your hormones aren't doing that dip throughout the month. But in perimenopause and it, which are the years leading up to menopause. Mm -hmm. And then menopause is that time when you are missing your period for a couple of months, and then you might get it back, and then you miss it, and then you might get it back. You're, you just feel cuckoo banana because instead of having a regular schedule, hormones are really fluctuating at odd times of the month, and you feel you know nuts in some cases. Some people can regulate through it, some can't. That's why you get the hot flashes and the and the you know fuzzy brain and the and forgetfulness, or um, that's why you feel low energy at certain times. So. It, it all depends on how you can muddle through it, but you are getting um, that you know lift of estrogen and progesterone throughout the month and then lowering. It just gets 
for lack of better words, messed up. It's not as, uh, and some people never have a regular cycle anyway. But for those of you who are like, ah, you know, so many women will say, I was so regular for so many years of my life, and now I feel like a complete crazy human because your cycle's <laughs> all over the place. Just hold on tight. Once you get through menopause, it's like everything goes like this. Smooth <laughs> flat line. Right? No, well, just flat lines. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a question from Tina. How do you stay disciplined when it comes to food, such as portion control and not eating too much junk? She goes, I love exercise, but I also love food. Yeah, I love food too. <laughs> How about you? I do too. I love food. Um, okay, there was a diet a long time ago called Volumetrics. Um, it, and it, it was a cool, you know, I'm not a huge fan of diets, but the one thing I loved about this one was it was eat foods that are low calorie in volume. Mm -hmm. where you don't feel guilty about it. So like fruits and vegetables, I eat so many. Like I never feel guilty to eat broccoli dipped in hummus, hummus or, you know, or cauliflower or celery and carrots dipped in guacamole. Like I never feel guilty about that because I fill myself up with vegetables yep. so that then when I do get a side of cheesy potatoes or whatever, I'm not as interested in having a huge um, portion. And I will tell you, like in the years where I was traveling a lot for work and I would be in airports and I would be so hungry. It's like my schedule hadn't worked out. You literally have so little self-control because you're so hungry. You think, oh, I just have to eat this thing and you eat too much of it. So load yourself up on the whole concept of volumetrics was eat large volumes of food that is low in calories and high in, in nutrients, mm -hmm. fruits, vegetables. Those are really the two main categories that give you tons of bang for your buck and they're low in calories and you can feel satiated and add in those healthy fats because if you are eating healthy fats you feel satiated longer mm -hmm. and when I'm eating nuts and seeds or I'm eating you know like um, guacamole avocados, avocados I just yep. feel satisfied if I never give myself those healthy fats I've always got that hankering for more yeah yeah good suggestion okay um Supplements, what are the yep. best ones to take? What do you suggest? What do you take? Um, okay, and I'm just looking at our Instagram. I'm looking at everybody. So you guys are not asking a lot of questions on Instagram. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, so back to supplements. I don't take a lot of supplements in the summer. Um, for those of you who live in warm weather all the time, lucky you. <laughs> so in the summer, I'm getting adequate vitamin D, you know, from the sunshine, yep. um, just being outside. I eat a lot more fish and seafood, so I'm getting my fish oil, mm -hmm. my uh, omega-3s. Um, I tend to just have more energy from daylight and I just don't take a lot of supplements in the summer. In the winter, I was just commenting to my husband um, that I've started back on my vitamin D because yeah. I realized that I haven't seen the sun. My skin has not seen the sun in like two I weeks. I feel like forever. Like two already. weeks. So I always take a vitamin D supplement um, in the darker months. I started taking my fish oil again because I'm not eating as much fish. Um, and so you need, everybody needs fish oil. If you do not eat any seafood, you need to take a fish oil supplement because the EPA and the DHA and the ALA, those are the three omega-3s. The EPA and the DHA are only in seafood, in fish. You can't find them anywhere else. ALA is in chia seeds and flaxseed and walnuts. And you can get that ALA in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But the EPA and the DHA, you need seafood. So if you're not eating seafood, start taking a fish oil. They are not fishy in flavor at all. Do you take fish oil? Um, we're actually just talking about this. I yeah. need to find one that is not super fishy. Because... Right. The Nordic Naturals is the brand that I think is the best. You can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them online at Amazon. Um, and they are not at all fishy. And even my kids, when they were little, would take those. You know, kids are super particular. So yes. um, try that out. I've been taking some B12 at this time of year. I just, because of the less daylight, I feel a little bit lower energy. And B12 is going to be that uh, giver of energy. Also, if you eat a lot of meat, you probably don't need the B12, but it just depends. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't take calcium personally because I have, I do bone building exercise every day. But if you are doing zero weightlifting, let's change that. Let's get you lifting weights. Let's get you doing some bone building type of activities. But, or if you're slight, I have um, a few friends. We, we have a few friends in common yeah. who are very tiny people mm -hmm. and their doctors say, you know, you got to keep that bone mass up to, to uh, reduce your risk of osteoporosis. Then you do want to take some sort of a calcium supplement. Yeah. Um, I have taken a multivitamin over the years. We've worked with some different vitamin companies that have given me multivitamins and I do like them, but I just, I don't necessarily feel the need for that. I kind of supplement where I need it. Magnesium. I take extra magnesium stiffness and as you get older uh, uh, our friend who was saying I'm 44 just wait till you're 54 you get out of bed like
has been good for me too. Yes. Um, awesome. Oh, and, and I do take collagen. Oh, yeah. I've been taking collagen for about six years because your body starts to uh, produce less collagen, less skin, hair, and nails. That's primarily why I take it. Okay. Yeah. Um, which Bipro uh, protein powder do you recommend for a person that works out for about 30 minutes? I, so Bipro rebranded. Those of you who know that we work with Bipro because we love it. Um, Bipro rebranded. They used to have just one brand of protein powder. They now have three different brands. Mm -hmm. I like the Elite. That is their regular. That is their you know, long-standing formula that they've always had. It's good. It's certified for sport. It has zero additives. It is just whey protein. I love it. It mm -hmm. gives me no stomach issues, no gas, no um, digestive problems. It, it's readily used for the muscles because it is high in leucine, which is one of the amino acids that's important for muscle synthesis. So I love the Elite. Now, they made a Bold. Bold is one of the brands. And Bold has extra added fat in it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to keep you satiated longer. So if you're somebody who drinks a protein shake and then doesn't eat till noon, you might like the Bold. It's cheaper. It's a little less expensive based on the way the whey protein is. It, you know, you can get, uh, uh, let's see, I can't even think right now, but there's a couple different ways to create whey protein. Why am I, um, I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. Can you? <laughs> no. no? It's not condensed. I'm, I'm okay, menopause brain, forget it. <laughs> we lost but her. I, we, you lost me. <laughs> but um, it's a little bit different formulation of the whey. So, like, my kids like the bold. They yes. like the way it tastes, and they like that it's cheaper, easier on their wallet. The Renew is a little lighter on the stomach, I, the, a little lighter flavor. It's geared towards seniors. It's geared towards people who maybe just had surgery or are recovering. Mm -hmm. It's geared towards people who have stomach issues. So... There's three different types now, and I recommend the Elite, the Elite for me. That's what I do. Awesome. So we have about five minutes left. Oh, my gosh. Thank quick. you for staying with us, all of you. Yes. Um, okay, last-minute question. Last-minute question. Uh, would you consider making more 20-minute full-body workouts? Yes, for sure we would. Um, yeah, that, that's a really good question. So <laughs> we are going to be doing some 20-minute chair workouts coming up. We will be. Um, Sam and I are filming those. When I say chair workout, I mean you will be sitting in a chair. We get so many requests from active people who are stuck in a boot, yep. who have had a hip replacement or a knee replacement or have an ankle injury or whatever it might be. Um, we have people who are senior citizens and say, sitting in a chair is my speed. So we're going to create a series of chair workouts that are going to be 20 minutes long. Um, for those, but we'll add some. The Power 20, if you are a Get Healthy You TV member, check out the Power 20. Those mm -hmm. are all full body 20 minute workouts. And they still, I filmed those about four years ago, and they're still like some more of my favorite. Ones. Yeah, and they're some of my favorite workouts because they are some of the more fun formats. I yeah. think they're they're kind of boot campish or circuit workouts, um, but yeah, well, uh, Sam's our uh, she remembers everything. She's I, writing it down. I got it down. <laughs> we'll do more twenty minutes. Um, we have let's see um, a guest question. She's trying to lose weight, but because of bad bilateral knee osteoarthritis and balance problems, she does not know how to exercise to get the weight off. Oh, so you need to do some form of cardio to burn up calories. Mm -hmm. I mean, strength training is going to rev your metabolism for sure over time, which is important. It's going to help you build muscle. It's going to keep your joints healthy. So there's a million good benefits for lifting weights. And it will help you lose weight over time because as your body is becoming more metabolic, if you will, you'll burn more calories every single day. But that extra burst of just getting off those extra 300 calories from cardio or and also for your heart health mm -hmm. if you are overweight is super important and, and, and good for your health numbers with your knee problem I don't know exactly what you're limited to I mean most a lot of people with knee injuries can still bike yep um, can still do an elliptical machine I would recommend those for sure they're low impact swimming is always easy on the joints however you know I don't like getting in a swimming pool, especially in the winter. So <laughs> yeah. I don't recommend it to everybody because I'm like, how compliant are you going to be? But it is a good form of exercise. There are some great um, even water aerobic classes yeah, yeah. that are intense. Um, you could do um, any kind of a, like a, a pedaling machine. There are a lot of machines that just can sit at the bottom of your couch and you pedal your legs up and down like you're on a bike. I just sold one yesterday, <laughs> yesterday. on Home Shopping on Shop HQ, um, a cute little pedaler 
color that, for instance, my mom loves, because yeah. um, you just have it uh, sitting down on the floor under the couch, and there's several different brands of that. Um, and then, of course, some people with knee injuries can do yoga. Mm, and yeah. yoga, like a hot yoga class, that'll burn some calories and strengthen the muscles around your knee. Mm -hmm. If your knee injury is such that you need to strengthen your knee, then any kind of a movement that you can do that is low impact, like an elliptical, like a bike, like a peddler, will help you to start strengthening those muscles. Um, so I think... I have one thing that I want to share, okay. Um, and then I think that we should just give them, you know, the exciting news one more time for okay. people that might have hopped in late. And then okay. I think we're ready to wrap up. So um, we have a member. She is 53. Um, totally understands and slowing down. However, she keeps moving. Thanks to Get Healthy You. Um, she said she started her health journey at um, with us at Get Healthy UTV at 156 pounds and now is at 114 pounds. What? At, That's awesome. Yeah, at 4 feet 11 inches. Oh, um, my gosh. So she just kind of wanted to give a little shout out. Um, thanks to you watching with encouragement all the Get Healthy UTV um coaches. Um, she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. She realizes it's a process of a lifetime, um, but she is very thankful. Okay, first of all, she's 53? <laughs> yes. Awesome. I don't know who you are, but please email me. We <laughs> would love to see your before and after picture if you'd be willing to share it. Um, before and after pictures can be very powerful for people mm -hmm. to see like that you can make a change at any age. So email me, Chris, at gethealthyyou.com, all right? Email me. I would love to hear from you. Um, congratulations. That's proof that you just have to move. You do. And it's just, it's those little baby steps. It is not, you know that one big step. It's not joining that CrossFit class and killing yourself every day. If that works for you, that's great. But for most people, starting with baby steps and slowly but surely adding on and then eating healthier and doing things that are healthy for the mind and the body, it's, it's, it's a life changer. So I'm super excited. It Congratulations. Is. That's great. Yep. And then one last time. our Okay. Fun. Let's talk about our fitness weekend coming up in um, April 2020. Yes, you've asked for it. We are doing it. We are finally doing it. We are going to have a live fitness weekend with the Get Healthy You TV trainers. It is at a hotel in Minneapolis. It is April. So we promise you, we're promising. No snow. Can I, can cross I cross your fingers? Yeah, cross your fingers. <laughs> um, but it'll be the beginning of spring. We're going to have a bunch of fitness classes. We're going to have swag bags. We're going to have educational um, classes about mindset and food. We're going to do group activities. We're going to meet friends. This is a great way. If you've ever been that person who goes on, you know, I've gone on a lot of profession, professional development weekends yep. where I've gone by myself or with a friend to, um, you know, just kind of do some professional development for business. Mm -hmm. I've taught at fitness conferences for 15 years and they're so renewing. They are. And refreshing. So maybe this is your holiday gift to you. Shopping for yourself. We will put the link up. It's um, on the Get Healthy You TV page. It's on the it's Facebook the page. Yep. We'll add it to Instagram. Um, we want you to be able to sign up. We just opened sign up and we're having a really good response. So don't miss out because um, there is limited. limited space available and we're so excited. I can't wait to meet all of you who are coming. It's yeah. gonna be so much fun. So just wanted to share that with you. Good luck through the holidays, everybody. We do come live uh, once a month. Yep. We'll see, are we gonna come live in December? December, we haven't set a date, but okay. I think so. <laughs> uh, typically we come most months of the year. Yep. Answer questions, don't give up on yourself, adjust your schedule to meet your holiday needs, and most of all, enjoy it, because it is a fun time of year. It is. Um, and I'm gonna poll everybody and ask, when is it okay to put your holiday decorations yeah. up? <laughs> I want to know, is it too early? Because I kind of want to do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll talk about that later. I'll <laughs> talk to you later. Thanks so Bye. much for joining us. Have a great day.